by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine, by the grace of Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله. My dear viewers of Rise and Shine, welcome back to our program. Alhamdulillahi azzawajal. It goes by the name of Rise and Shine. Alhamdulillahi azzawajal. We usually begin by listening to the beautiful verses of the glorious Quran. Let's listen. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu taala ala Muhammad. صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يقل له كفوا أحد صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله سبحان الله صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم الحمد لله he has recited سورة الإخلاص ما شاء الله ذا سورة by which it has been stated that to recite this سورة once an individual gains the reward of reciting a third of the glorious Quran the entire Quran Subhanallah, my dear viewers of Madrid, Alhamdulillah, we have listened to the beautiful verses of the glorious Quran expressing the tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each and every single day we have a new topic and we also have, mashallah, our guest, Mubin Bai, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, jazakallah khaira for joining us. Um, I was saying you're looking very tired today. Allahu Akbar, but inshallah you will uh, rise inshallah by listening to the naat of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam. Let's listen to the naat, the praise, the salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallallahu alaihi ya يا رسول الله وسلم عليك يا حبيب الله وصف روح Oh, 
غلام لو لگی ہے اب اس در کے غلام چارائے درد رضا کرتے ہیں چارائے درد رضا سنا کرتے ہیں جن کو مہ مود کہا کرتے ہیں صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلی آلہ وسلم الحمدللہ عجل we have listened to the na'ad praise upon the greatest of mankind the peace of our hearts and minds the most generous and kind Rasulullah صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلی آلہ وسلم and الحمدللہ as usual each and every single day we also have a picture now الحمدللہ عجل today we have our respected Mubin by may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him uh, for joining us especially today now for those of you that may not be aware very recently we have one of our most important departments of Dawud Islami which is known as Darul Iftar what is Darul Iftar inshallah today because we have our respected Ustaz Mubin Sahib so inshallah he shall be telling us inshallah if you don't mind tell us and we also will promote your Darul Iftar inshallah um, about Dar al Iftar, what, does, what is Dar al Iftar? What does Dar al Iftar mean? Some of you may have never heard of Dar al Iftar. Inshallah, we shall find out later on during our program. But first, let's come back to our picture. Let's take a look at today's picture. Um, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, it seems like uh, some of Binsab has woken up a little. Ji, mashallah, he's got a smile on his face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep him smiling. Uh, the picture, if you take a look at this, uh, it's actually quite a brilliant picture, I think. So you have on one side, there's two people facing each other. On one side, we have a um, man with his, you know, with a, you know, literally, you can say he's got a big mouth. Mm. You can say he literally has a big mouth. And I don't know, is that an eye or something over there? Something little, which is white over there. And then on the other side, we have a man whose mouth is not so big um, and he has a very big eye or is that his brain? Whatever it may be, my dear viewers of Padrini Shadal. Um, this is for you to tell us, what do you think of this picture? Alhamdulillah, today we have a beautiful topic because mashallah, we generally speak about worship. We speak about worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to worship Him, to only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to worship anybody, anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have been ordered to worship in many forms, many ways, many methods. MashaAllah, sometimes we have spoken about salah. We must perform our five daily salah each and every single day. Yes, each and every single day we must perform our five daily salah. And Fajr salah is included within those five, by the way. MashaAllah, we had the blessed month of Ramadan. Now, during the blessed month of Ramadan, we fast during this blessed month, Alhamdulillah, 29 or 30 fast, my dear viewers. So all of these are types of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are outward you can say outwardly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically these are physical and the physical acts physical methods of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then there's another aspect there's also the spiritual side 
There's a spiritual side, the inner side, my dear viewers, of Madani channel. And for this, inshallah, we shall be asking Mubin Bhai to explain more, to expand on this. Ji. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen. Amma ba'ad. Fa'udhu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Topic um, regarding spirituality and in particular spiritual allegiance. So as you mentioned, spirituality is extremely important in our beautiful religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Al-A'la, Qad aflah man tazakka. The one who purified himself has indeed attained success. So success, we might measure in, very diff in various different things. Worldly success, many people measure by the bank balance a person possesses, how many houses he has, how big his house is, how many cars he has, what types of cars he has. But this is success which is superficial. This is success which will be left behind and is just momentary or temporary. The true success is being successful in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you mentioned, that success entails fulfilling outward acts of worship that Allah Almighty has made obligatory upon us, but also purifying one's inner and making sure that one's, one's spirituality is enhanced. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, in this verse, that attaining spirituality or spiritual purification, this is a sign of that individual who has attained success in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the question could arise, how do we attain purification of the heart? How do we attain spirituality? How do we attain peace and tranquility of our heart? How do we make our heart fully engrossed in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, like with any journey, for example, a physical journey, if I want to travel from Bradford to London, then if I've never been there before, and I don't know the destination, then I need some form of navigation. Whether that's another individual to sit with me and guide me there, whether that's some form of technology, nowadays that we have, right. we type in the postcode and we follow the instructions that are given to us on satellite navigation. But without a guide, without a navigator, without another individual or some form of technology to make us reach that destination. If I have never been to London before, and it's a postcode somewhere in the middle of London, there's a very high possibility of me getting lost. I could try to follow the signs, but the signs will, for example, lead me to the city of London. But once I'm in London, it won't lead me to the exact postcode. The signs may lead me to the area, but to reach the actual destination and to achieve success on that journey, to achieve my goal, I need some form of guide. Similarly, on our spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need a guide. If we're going to try to attain spirituality, try to purify our hearts without a guide, then there's a great chance of us getting lost on the way and Allah even becoming misguided. Allah. And this is where the concept of spiritual allegiance comes. So initially, the Sahaba alayhim ridwan, they had the great blessing of being able to take directly from the beloved Prophet You see, Mashri, you began brilliantly, and I love the analogy also, you know, the navigation. I'm just wondering where, you know, in the olden days, sometimes people would get themselves around by asking people. Mm. Um, but there's a big problem, there's a huge problem, in fact. And this is something which is international. Mm. That sometimes you would ask somebody something, you would ask them, you know, which way is this place? And they'll sometimes give you the total opposite direction. Yes. So it's not only asking, but it's also asking the right person. Because somebody could direct you in the wrong way as mm. well, can't they? Yes, a very important point. And that point. would become problematic. It's a very important point, very important point. Especially when it comes to the field of spirituality. Inshallah, we'll move on to this. Because there are certain conditions. So how do you know that the person you're asking for guidance is actually qualified to give you that guidance? So yeah. there are signs and conditions which the scholars have mentioned. We'll move on to that, inshallah, shortly. Um, but just in terms of, um, you know, taking taking a guide or asking somebody who's an expert, this is something that has been passed down from generation to generation from the time of the Sahaba alayhi muridwan. So the Sahaba alayhi muridwan, obviously, uh, they had the greatest blessing of being able to t take spirituality Allah. direct from the ocean of spirituality, the source of all spirituality, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then, the Sahaba Ali Muridwan then passed that knowledge on to their disciples, to the following generation. So the following generation would come to the Sahaba and pledge allegiance to them. So this concept of pledging allegiance, this has been passed down generation to generation. And even in this day, Alhamdulillah, we have pious individuals, men of spirituality, who have an unbroken chain back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning 
that they have taken their spirituality, their purification of the heart from their teacher, who took it physically from his teacher, who took it physically from his teacher, and that unbroken chain Allah. leads all the way back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And this is, uh, that, that's beautiful, SubhanAllah. There's a connection, isn't it? And it's a connection not only to the Shaykh himself, but all the way back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. Wa this is a spiritual connection, my dear viewers of Madani Channel. Alhamdulillah, this is also a practice of the awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You know, that the awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they themselves would give allegiance to another individual because everybody, my dear viewers, requires guidance. And out there you have, you have real and fake everything. You know, you'll have a real doctor, you'll have a fake doctor. Hmm. You'll have good solicitors, real solicitors, then you'll have the fake ones who are just out there for the money. Hmm. But if you were to come across a fake doctor, it wouldn't mean that, oh, that's it, forget going to doctors. You know, there's no point going to doctors, I'll just, you know, Google everything myself and I'll operate on myself. Hmm. Allahu Akbar. Same with everything else, my dear viewers. You get real ones, you get fake ones. But it's your duty to be able to first identify which is the real one. You get real and fake diamonds also, don't you? Of course, yeah. yeah. And, you know, if, you, if diamond is your business and you need to purchase a diamond, you will do everything you can to first be able to identify whether or not that diamond is real. Mm. So how do we identify whether these diamonds are real or not? Well, um, there are many different ways. One uh, beautiful analogy that was given once um, by Ruk Nishura, he said that in the same way that when a person is afflicted with a physical illness, a physical disease, a person tries to find out who the specialist doctor is for curing that particular illness. For example, a person has a heart problem. So he wants to find the best heart specialist in the city. So to do that, what does he do? He looks at the track record of that heart specialist. So he looks to see how successful is his hospital, how many patients has he treated successfully, how many individuals have come to him with their heart problems, with their heart illnesses, and how many of them, what's the, what's the percentage of those who, who he has been able to cure. Allah. So by looking at a person's track record and his success rate, you can see whether or not that person is genuine, uh, or whether or not or whether he's a fake, or whether a he's pseudo. yeah, he's a pseudo doctor. So similarly, he mentions Rukn Shura mentions this in one of his speeches that if we look at spirituality, because people today are afflicted with very spiritual ailments, people are afflicted with the with the illness of jealousy, people are afflicted with the illness of arrogance, people have these uh, diseases of hatred for fellow Muslims in their hearts, people have diseases of um, things like stinginess, things like not being inclined towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being lost in the love of the world, all of these are spiritual illnesses. So if you want to see who an expert doctor is in terms of curing spiritual ailments, you need to look and see who is somebody who has a high track record and a high success rate of curing spiritual illnesses, Allah. of transforming those people who are away from the true path of Islam and making them pious and practicing Muslims. So he says that in this day and age, Alhamdulillah, if you want to see an incredibly successful specialist in this field, then look towards the blessed personality of Amir Ahl Sunnah, the leader and founder of Dawud Islami, Hazrat Alama Abu Bilal, Muhammad Ilyas Al Tarqadri, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, who without doubt has transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people across the world. And you'll find many, many people, each with a different story to tell about how initially they were on a different path in their life. They were disinclined from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were away from the true purpose of life. However, Amir Ahl Sunnah, through a connection with him, when they came into the spiritual domain of Amir Ahl Sunnah, Amir Ahl Sunnah, through his spiritual power and his spiritual healing, by connecting to that blessed chain through Amir Ahl Sunnah, those individuals transformed their lives and were cured from those spiritual diseases and now live a life of piety in accordance with the teachings of Islam. Allah, 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 Allah. SubhanAllah. So, what would you say, 100% success rate? You know, it's, it's Allah Akbar. But if you was on the channel, really. I mean, we can give, we can give examples, I think. The, this is what we're just going to mention is, we have over 100 departments. Mm. 
So do like generally about some people, you give one example. Mm. So I'm just thinking, where do we give beginning examples? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, you know, to be honest with you, there's two examples right, sitting right here on the screen of people right. who have gained so much benefit, I'm sure you'll agree, from spiritually being connected to Amir Hassan. And, and, and there's so many incredible stories like um, the famous... Uh, just story. Madhini Channel itself, them being able to watch Madhini Channel. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, in uh, terms of the individual transformations, um, like... Imagine a, uh, a young man who has a beautiful voice, who's been attracted to uh, the field of singing, Allah. who's gaining opportunities internationally to sing in front of some of the biggest people in that field, who's being offered money, who's being offered fame. A person who really is on the cusp of achieving what most people would probably consider as uh, a great amount of money, a great amount of fame, a great amount of prestige maybe even in that particular field of pop music, of singing. But for him to reject all of that, to turn his back on that, because it's sin, because it's disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and come into the path of piety, to use that gift of a beautiful voice, not Allah. to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather to please Allah Almighty by reciting praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, instead of singing songs. Allah. And then to step on the path of knowledge, and rather than becoming Ma'adullah a pop singer, which is a career full of sin and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather to engage in seeking knowledge, to study Islam for eight years, and to graduate as a scholar, as an alim of Islam, a scholar of the Quran and Hadith. This is something that has actually happened through Allah. the blessings of Amir al -Sunad. I'm talking of Junaid Sheikh, our respected brother from Karachi. And then we who, can also mashallah, speak about one of our classmates. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, mashallah. Um, so, uh, in terms of transformation, yeah. uh, our views of Madin Channel may be aware of this, it was uh, obviously shown on Madin Channel as well, that when we graduated from Jamiat al Madina, which was the first class to graduate in UK, Jamiat al Madina, alhamdulillah, in that class was a very unique individual, mashallah, our Nurbai. And uh, Nurbai, he Prior to coming into Dawat Islami and becoming an alim, becoming a scholar, graduating from Jamiat al Madina, many years ago he was not even a Muslim. Many years ago he was in fact a Christian, and not just a Christian from the common folk. He was actually responsible for preaching Christianity. I.e., he was a priest. Internationally. When he gained connection to Amir al Sunnah and he Allah, came Allah, Allah, Allah. into contact with brothers from Dawat Islami, his heart transformed, and he, Alhamdulillah, was blessed with guidance. MashaAllah, he stepped on the path of knowledge and graduated from Jamiat al-Madina as well. Allah, 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 subhanAllah, subhanAllah. And mashallah, Nurba is a regular viewer of ours also. Mashallah. He always, you know, uh, messages me, encourages me. You know, he says, you know, Jazakallah wa khairah, mashallah. He thanks and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly bless him. Ameen. He is, you know, as we, we are very fortunate, hmm. and we can say this really, that we are very fortunate to have been his class fellows. Definitely. Because mashallah, we were, alhamdulillah, we were the first year, first graduates of our Jamaat al Madina in Bradford. There may be some who are not aware. Alhamdulillah, right now, at this moment in time, we have nine Jamaat al Madina, six full time, three part time. And these are in various cities. And inshallah, this following year, they shall be increasing to 10. And we shall have one Jamiat al Madina also in London. So, those individuals who are of the age 16 plus, please do enroll, attempt to enroll, inshallah, give your applications to enroll in our Jamiat al Madina. Yeah, and this is and for Islamic brothers, practicing. for Islamic sisters, Correct. alhamdulillah, we and have in Birmingham for, and in Bradford as well. And in Bradford. Separate, separate branches just for sisters, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. So, so right now, this, are watching. this is two. Um, for the Islamic sisters so far, inshallah and I'm sure this will increase very soon. Definitely. Because inshallah. generally, mashallah, they do a lot more work mm. and you know we have we will inshallah soon have a lot more even than the um Jamaat al Madina for the males. Right. Coming back to um, our topic, mashallah yes. we're speaking about spiritual Yes, yeah, one guidance. thing one thing I wanted to clarify because some people might think that okay, this concept of uh, having a sheikh or having a murshid right. pledging allegiance to somebody spiritually, where does this derive from? So uh, there's a beautiful verse of the Quran in Surah Al Isra, ayah number 71. Allah subhanahu wa taala states, "Yawma nad'u kulla unasim bi imamihim." On the day when we shall summon every group along with its leader. Now, in the commentary of this, in Tafsir Nur Al Irfan, it stated that from this ayah we learn that in this world it's important for a person 
to take a righteous leader because a person will be called with that leader on the Day of Judgment. So he says that this uh, gives us an indication towards the concept of taqlid, which is following one of the four Imams in fiqh, in um, Islamic law. So we have to follow either Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, Imam Shafi'i. These are the four Sunni schools of Islamic law. Uh, so the majority of people from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, they are Hanafi. And he also says that from the same verse, we also gain an indication towards the importance of having a leader, a spiritual guide, spiritual guide. in terms of tariqah, in terms of mm -hmm. spirituality. Mm -hmm. So Sharia is our practical law, how to pray, how to perform Hajj, how to give Zakat, what are the rulings of marriage, of divorce, all these other things. But then there are rules and laws of spirituality as well, how to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to gain ma'rifah, recognition of Allah Almighty, how to truly follow the blessed example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And this is done through following the leaders of Islamic spirituality. So based on this verse of the Quran, we learn about not only following an Imam in fiqh, but also following a leader or a shaykh or a murshid, a guide in terms of spirituality as well. Okay, I've got a question for you. Okay. Um, when did you first give your hand a pledge in allegiance? Mm, wow, uh, it was a well, oh, It was only once I'm assuming, I don't know why I said first mm. but When was it that you actually gave your hand? You know, it was approximately 10 years ago now 9 to 10 years ago It was a couple of years or a year and a half before I joined Jamia al Madinah. Yeah, at that time, um, Alhamdulillah, my blessed mother She had started attending the Ijtima'at of Dawud Islam for Islamic right. Sisters And because of that Madin channel started to be watched in our home. So uh, one day I was watching Madin channel with my respected and honorable mother and Amir al sunnah was uh, delivering his pearls of wisdom and guidance and I just thought this is an incredible personality, incredible individual who has so much humility and so much sincerity to serve Islam, mashallah, without any, um, you know, without the need to be flamboyant or without the need to you know, desire money or without the need to um, desire fame. SubhanAllah, such sincerity and such pure intention, mashallah. So these are the things which kind of incline... You see, so this is a result of Madhini channel, isn't it? Then? Yeah. As Madhini you channel. mentioned, mashallah. So in, the, in that particular uh, program, then Amir uh, delivered the words of Bayah. So then I repeated those words and I became one of them. So yeah, I think I'm assuming it's Madhya Mazakara. Yeah, Madhya Mazakara. Every Saturday, Alhamdulillah, Saturday evenings, um, there is a Madhya Mazakara. Amir al Sunnat, Dhamad Barakat Ali himself, mashallah, they themselves are on live answering various and many questions, mashallah. So this was an effect of Madhya channel. This yeah, is yeah, the and then Alhamdulillah, just, Madhya just Madhya a few Madhya. months after that, I, after becoming more attached to Amir al Sunnat and the environment of Dawud Islami, I performed Irtikaf in the environment of Dawud Islam. In that Irtikaf, there was an announcement that a Jamiat al Madina for the first time is going to be opened residentially in Bradford, uh, in which Tarsin Nizami, the Alim course, will be taught. So there, that really, um, through that Irtikaf, I already had a passion to learn knowledge. And I remember the day you came to Jamiat al Madina, along with your brothers, and I think I helped you with the bugs, if I remember correctly. Subhanallah. Um, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Ji, my dear viewers of Madina, alhamdulillah, um, so, how has this affected you then? Do you know, I mean, I mean, at that time when you pledged allegiance, mm. even before Jamaat al Madina, obviously, mashallah, now you've come and you're sitting in Dar al Ifta, but spiritually, how did this affect you at that time when you pledged allegiance? At that time, it was kind of like a, a point of being at the crossroads in my life at that time because um, I was studying secular studies as well. And I had gone through a couple of things in my life which kind of made me start thinking more deeply about the purpose of life. So one of my close friends had passed away at a very young age, I think he was 21 or 22. Um, and that had a great effect on me because it started to make me think about what is life about, um, he's gone into the next life, if I was in a situation, what would have happened to me, have I done anything to truly gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and I started thinking about these kind of things and at that time, um, it was it was like a it was just the perfect time for me because at that time when I was searching for guidance I was searching for answers those answers came to me Alhamdulillah in the form of Amir al Sunnah so after pledging allegiance to Amir al Sunnah then obviously we have um, the Madini activities of Dawud Islami through the spiritual blessings of Amir al Sunnah I started to 
um, gain more interest in attending the ijtima'at. We used to go to Birmingham every Thursday for the ijtima and travel on Madini Kafidas and then the Etikaf happened. And it just became a lot easier to perform good deeds. So I think it was the spiritual, the beautiful thing about pledging allegiance to Amir al and getting that spiritual connection to him is that he gives you an environment which is extremely important because when you're by yourself and you have these questions and you have um, even you have this kind of this thirst for spirituality for getting closer to Allah but you don't have an environment it can become very difficult because you can fall back into your, your old ways very easily but if you have a group of brothers around you and you have activities to go to regularly and those activities it's are continuously it's environment isn't it it's definitely, it's, definitely. It's, it's so important that kind of protects you and preserves you and stops you from going back into your old ways and helps you to continually progress alhamdulillah and it's really important so important to have uh, an environment because sometimes even when a person does turn towards mashallah he becomes islamic he'll pray his five daily salah but then after a, a bit of time that wears off gradually mm. yeah, yeah yeah and you see he, he needs somebody around him to also to continue to encourage him and the reason for this is because you know we're living for example in the united kingdom where we are constantly being told to do sins and it is very very rare that we are told to pray our salah mm. told to you know perform good deeds and this is the reason why it's a lot more difficult especially in a number it's, it's from the it's from the spiritual blessings of Amir Sunan that he gives us basically like that friend circle otherwise if you and um, this is something that um, Nigar Shura once said that if you look at your friend circle and if you think to your, think to yourself about your closest friends ask yourself the question on the day of judgment which of these friends would benefit me Allah. So many of us was growing up, maybe we didn't have any friends who we could say that, okay, this is a friend of mine, this individual, this particular mate of mine is going to be the one who on the Day of Judgment is going to benefit me. Because many of us grew up in an environment where our friends were not inclined towards worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were not reminding us about, about Allah Almighty. But through the blessings of Dawud Islam and Amir al-Sunnah, we alhamdulillah gain connections and friendships with individuals who we can say that inshallah this friend of mine will help me on the Day of Judgment, will support me on the Day of Judgment Mashallah. when I really need him the most. MashaAllah, my dear viewers of the channel, Alhamdulillah, you are watching Rise and Shine each and every single day. We have a reminder. Let's take a look. Let's see what we have for today's reminder. Let's move to and listen to, inshallah, the reminder we have for today. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. My dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, once a person asked Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi that how did you become such a big scholar? How did you become such a big alim And now before I continue, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi was that personality, my dear Islamic brothers, that millions and millions of people followed Imam Abu Hanifa before us. And millions of people today across the whole world, they follow Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah They call themselves Hanafis. One day, my dear respected Islamic brothers, Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah someone asked him, how did you become such a big Ali Medin? Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah he replied and he said that I used to get some knowledge. I used to do the shukr of Allah and Allah used to give me more knowledge. This is why I have got this status. What do we learn from this? The more shukr of Allah you do, the more you thank Allah, the more Allah will give you, inshallah. And my dear respected Islamic brothers, today, sadly, people are moaning, I've got this problem, I've got this difficulty. Look at that person, look what he's got, and look what I've got. Just remember one Madani fool, my dear respected Islamic brothers. What you have, yes, what you have, what I have, is someone's dream out there. Many people would love to live the lifestyle that we are living. For what? They're too poor. They don't have a house to sleep in. They don't have a house to stay in. You say that I want that car because I don't like this one. Whether they don't even have a car, many people around the world. They don't they have to walk to get to their destination. Allah Azawajal, He has given us so much. My dear respected Islam, but just think to yourself, how much do we thank Allah? How much do we praise Allah Azawajal? How much shukr of Allah Azawajal do we do in one day? Think to yourself today, anybody does something good to you. You you can't continue to thank him. You can't stop thanking him. My dear respected Islam, Allah Azawajal has given us so much. But how much shukr of Allah do we do? How much do we thank Allah Azawajal? So make one intention today, inshallah Azawajal, that you will thank Allah Azawajal, you will do the shukr of Allah Azawajal, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah.
by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. SubhanAllah, that was our today's reminder. We must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything He has given us. And He has given us so much. Really, He has given us so much. And He continues to give each and every single moment, each and every single, you know, millisecond you can see. We cannot move an inch without His permission, without His sustenance. We cannot breathe. We cannot open our eyes in the morning. We cannot rise. We cannot shine, my dear viewers of Mother Nishal. We must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything He has given us. Allahu Akbar. And the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are immense. They are truly immense. And some of those blessings are having the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst us and having people like Amir Ahlul Sunnah Ahmad Barakatuhu Aliya. He is a true blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. Regarding the occasion where, MashaAllah, we know how uh, in the early days of your studies in Jamiat al Medina, MashaAllah, you wanted to take bayah with Amir Ahlul Sunnah. But you wanted to do it in a special way, didn't you? Yes, Alhamdulillah. You see, I was really critical at first. Mm. I was totally different, mashallah. When you came in, you came in fully. Um, when I came, I was very critical. So I would question everything just generally, as like a normal person would. And I thought to myself, look, Amir al Sunnah, Damat Barakatim Ali, I did respect them, undoubtedly, mashallah. I loved them, I respected them. But there was just one thing because I was thinking, who shall I give allegiance to? Mm. Now I had made my mind that yes, I do need to give allegiance. I need to, I do need to pledge my allegiance. But who to give it to? So I was thinking, there's this sheikh, there's this sheikh, there's this. You know, we hear about all sorts of mashallah. Um, and then undoubtedly, there's also Amir Ali Sunnah who was right there, mashallah. But what I used to think to myself is that whenever I see them, I only see them on TV. So, can I be a proper judge of, you see, you know, before you choose, uh, as you know, he said that before you choose your period, you know, you choose with open eyes, after that you close your eyes, don't you? So at first there's no harm in questioning and, you know, pondering over things. So I did think that the only time I see them is I see them on TV. So I can't really be a judge and say, oh yeah, the best, they're the best ones because I don't know what they're like off TV. But Alhamdulillah, then, mashallah, I think you may have also been with us when we traveled to um, Babul Medina, Karachi, in the, I think it was the first semester, after the first semester, in the first six months. And that, that was when I witnessed Mir al And really, I remember because we sat with them to eat, and luckily, I think I probably got to eat with them the most. Um, about five or six times, Alhamdulillah, I was really, really blessed to sit down with them and eat. But I wouldn't eat, I would just watch them. <laughs> this is exactly how it was. I wouldn't eat, I would just watch Amir Ali Sunnah. And I made my mind that this is truly an exceptional, a phenomenal personality, individual. So then I made my mind that yes, you know, because Alhamdulillah I've been lucky to go and visit other peeds, etc. But nobody could match this individual. So I made my mind to give my bi'a. But then I thought, no, I don't want it to be a normal one. Mm. Because the way you said, mashallah, you know, they mentioned it on TV and there would be people there where they would say it and you would repeat after them. I thought, no, I don't want it to be a normal. I want it to be a proper, you know, like, what it is. it's not that they are not proper. Mm. But there's just more of that, so don't they yeah, their own kind you, of... you know, you have your own preferences. I just wanted mine to be special, mm. so I wanted mine to be hand in hand. So Alhamdulillah, when I approach Amir Ali Sunnat, um, I give, pledge my allegiance hand in hand to Amir Ali Sunnat, Alhamdulillah. So I was extremely fortunate because I don't know many individuals who have done so, but Alhamdulillah. And you see, do you know the reason why I asked you, what did he feel after? Was because as soon as I left, I actually felt something. So you know, like I felt that sensation going through my entire body. Subhanallah. Sorry, coming back to 
um, spiritual allegiance. Mm. Allah. Subhanallah. In terms of our, mashallah, spiritual allegiance and Amir Ahl Sunnah, it's amazing because uh, it reminds me of something that, mashallah, Mufti Qasim Saab Hafidahullah recently informed us um, that Amir Ahl Sunnah Tan Barakatun Aliyah, he follows such incredible sunnahs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which it's not possible for a person to adopt through his own effort such sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ which can only be gifted from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the beloved Prophet ﷺ, it was a miracle of his, a beautiful sunnah of his that every single sahabi, whoever it may be, they all thought that from all of the sahaba, they were the closest to the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning a particular sahabi would come to the Prophet ﷺ, he would be given so much love and affection, that when he would leave, he would say, I am the most beloved of all of the companions to the Prophet The next companion would come, he would spend time with the Prophet gain so much love and affection, he would go back and he would say, no, no, I am the most beloved to the Prophet And all of the companions would have the exact same feeling. And Mufti Sahib, uh, may Allah bless him and may Allah preserve him, he says that it's exactly the same with Amir al-Sunnat. With Amir al-Sunnat, all of the murids of Amir al-Sunnat, whether they be the Mufti Ani Kiram, the Arakin Shura, whoever they may be, when they go and they spend time in the court of Amir al-Sunnat, they come back saying that Amir al-Sunnat loves me the most. Allah. Every single one of them. And it's as if Amir al-Sunnat is, mashallah, embodying that particular and incredible sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in this day and age. And this is a, an extremely important thing because that the true miracle of a wali is his adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if a person truly wants to see whether an individual is qualified to be a peer, then you should look at that individual's adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in Amir al Sunnah, Alhamdulillah, we see not only in the physical Sunnahs, but also in the spiritual Sunnahs, in the Sunnahs of treating people, the Sunnahs of conduct, MashaAllah, Amir al Sunnah, Alhamdulillah, is uh, at the forefront of doing everything in accordance to the Sunnah And they're being the extremely Ali. wary mm. of every person they've somehow contacted against them. Meaning, sometimes it's possible that without intending to, inadvertently you can say, mm. um, harm somebody. Yes. They're sometimes just not even smiling at somebody. Mm. You know, and they would be very, very, you know, they're really conscious of these things. Very, very conscious of these things. You know, where sometimes they may think, oops, did I say something? Did I harm you? Like they may have corrected you. Now it's their job to correct us. Mm. You know, if we said something wrong, they may correct us, but then they'll feel bad. Oops, you know, how did I correct him? Did he feel bad? Or what if you know I've embarrassed him? What if he's feeling bad? What do I do? And Amir al Sunnah Dhamad Barakatum And this has happened, mashallah, really. They would write a letter to that person apologizing. Really, Amir al Sunnah. That individual who has millions of followers Subhanallah. would write a letter to such an individual who is nothing, you know, we're nothing, apologizing, asking for forgiveness. Really, this is something which I've never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. Really, never mind saying, you know, some people, I've never heard of this before with anyone else. Mm -hmm. And Subhanallah, it's been, so, you know, to those people that are. Uh, mashallah, we speak, we're speaking about Amir al Sunnah, but what if somebody says that we, we are biased? We could be biased. Why? Because, mashallah, you know, this is the setup of Amir al Sunnah. We're mm. part of Dawah Islami, aren't we? Mm. So, what if somebody says, oh, you know, you're being biased? We could, say, being biased? we could say, if you, even if you look at it objectively, okay, so one important thing that we need to discuss was the conditions. So, there's four conditions right. uh, which must be fulfilled for a person to be a valid spiritual guide. So, first and foremost, we'd say to those people, Look to see whether Amir al Sunnah fulfills those four particular conditions. And then moving on, there's another few things that are mentioned by the scholars. So, first of all, the first condition for anybody to be a valid spiritual guide is that the individual must be a Sahih al Aqidah Sunni Muslim, meaning the person must have correct beliefs in accordance with Quran and Sunnah, alhamdulillah. So, Amir al Sunnah, of course, it goes without saying that Amir al Sunnah is somebody who has saved the Aqidah of hundreds of thousands of people, mashallah, 
and brought them onto the correct path and taught them about the true beliefs of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Secondly, the spiritual chain of the Shaykh, and we alluded to this earlier, must be connected and unbroken from one Shaykh to the next, all the way back to the Prophet. So, Alhamdulillah, Minul Sunnat's Shajarah is published, it's printed, it's not hidden away, and you can see all of the dates of uh, birth and dates of passing of each Shaykh, and you can see how each individual, mashallah, met the prior individual and took allegiance from them, gained khilafah, gained permission, uh, successorship from them, and then the chain continued. So you can see how this goes through uh, Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, rahimahullah ta'ala, and then through his shaykhs, back to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, and back to Imam Hussein, and back to Sayyidina Ali, and then from Sayyidina Ali to the Prophet. So this is the second condition. And of course, this is found within Amir al Sunnat. Thirdly, the Shaykh must be somebody knowledgeable. So the Shaykh must be an Alim. So Alhamdulillah, Amir al Sunnat is not just an Alim. MashaAllah, he's somebody who has produced through his efforts hundreds, if not thousands, thousands, thousands of Alims, MashaAllah. And not just Alims, MashaAllah, Amir al Sunnat has produced Muftis, scholars who are specialist scholars. And um, Amir al Sunnat, actually, uh, a few years ago, the class of the Khasus fil Fiqh which is the special, those after graduating from the Alim course, after becoming scholars, they do further advanced studies to become muftis, to qualify uh, and have the ability to actually issue verdicts on Islamic rulings. Um, the class of scholars who have graduated from Jamiat al Madina, who are Alims, who are doing further study now, that class, they had in the month of Ramadan special uh, sessions with Amir al-Sunnat. And during those special sessions, they took notes of the pearls of wisdom of Amir al-Sunnat, and that was compiled into a booklet and that booklet was published by Maktabatul Madina, uh, Ilmu Hikmat Ki Madani Pool. So in that particular booklet, this is Amir Ahl Sunnat's guidance and training for scholars who are specializing to become muftis. <laughs> so Amir Ahl Sunnat is that scholar from whom even the muftis go and gain guidance. This is the level of Amir Ahl Sunnat's scholarship. And you can look at mashallah, all the books Amir Ahl Sunnat has written, hundreds and hundreds of books which are available on, on Dawud Islami's website in various different languages. Um, so, Amir Sunnah, mashallah, in terms of knowledge, and the fourth and final condition is that the Shaykh must be somebody who acts according to Sharia. I mean, the Shaykh must not be a fasiq, must not be a uh, open sinner. Open I mean, the Shaykh should not be involved in breaking the laws of Islam, breaking the laws of Allah and His Messenger. Azza wa Jalla wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So sometimes you have people who claim to be a peer, claim to be a Shaykh, but for example, the guy's got really, really long hair, which is down to his back, for example. And this is haram for a man. In Islam, it's haram for a man to keep his hair lower than his shoulders. Similarly, you have some individuals who um, don't, have have, have, don't have a beard, for example, or they have a beard which is shorter than a fist length. So again, that's impermissible. Or some people have different types of jewelry, wearing gold, wearing, wearing massive rings. So these things, uh, again, wearing these various types of jewelry, it's only permissible in Islam to wear one ring, and even that has certain conditions. So a guy who's wearing multiple rings or chains, or is wearing gold, for a man obviously that's haram. So such an individual, no matter how much claims he has to spirituality, cannot be a peer. And alhamdulillah, in terms of adherence to Sharia, we see that Amir al-Sunnat is so strict, uh, and is so, mashallah, careful in terms of ensuring that he acts upon Sharia, in every single way, mashallah. Amir al Sunnat, alhamdulillah. And there's so many examples of this where, um, you know, it's, it's incredible how Amir al Sunnat, he makes sure that even those who are around him are not breaking the laws of Sharia. So, this is the fourth condition. And regarding this, uh, Sheikh Junaid Baghdadi, uh, an, one of the greatest spiritual guides of this entire ummah, mashallah, he said beautifully, Tariqatuna hadihi muqayyadun bil kitabi wa sunnah. He said that this spiritual path of ours is restricted to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. If anybody is going beyond the boundaries of the Qur'an and Sunnah and claiming spirituality, then such a person's claims are false and must be rejected. So we can see that Amir al-Sunnah, mashallah, he uh, fulfills each and every single one of these conditions to the greatest extent, alhamdulillah. And then if you look at spiritual efficacy, if you look at the fairs of Amir al-Sunnat, and you look at, we, we talked about this earlier as well, how Amir al-Sunnat, mashallah, how he has successfully changed the lives of so many people. And this is something that scholars have also mentioned in the past as well, that if you want to look at the uh, 
spirituality of a particular shaykh, if you want to look at how effective that person's blessings are, if you want to look at how effective that person's, uh, you can say, the power of that person's spirituality, just look at what he's achieved. So we can see that, mashallah, Amir al-Sunnah's fairs has spread throughout the world. Alhamdulillah, we're seeing here in Bradford, Amir al-Sunnah physically has never stepped foot in this country. Allah, 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 Allah. Despite that, in this country, there are approximately 50 um, Fazani Medinas, Madrasat Medinas, buildings you where, 50, yeah, where the work of Dawud Islam is happening. Like you mentioned earlier, there's nine Jamiat al Medinas for brothers, two for sisters. Now there's Darul Iftal Sunnat as well, mashallah. So all of this is the fruits of Amir al Sunnat's efforts, alhamdulillah, and is actually a proof to show how powerful his spirituality is. Allah, whenever we use Amir al we have a kalam. Uh, Mashallah recited by Abu Khalil Bai. Let's listen to this kalam about Amir al Sunnah Dhamma Barakat Mu'aliya. Sallu ala al Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Pari jahu, Sadqe jahu, Mulshdi attar par. Pari jahu, Sadqe jahu, Mulshdi attar par. Dil bhi Sadqe jahu, Bihwaru, Dil bhi Sadqe jahu, Bihwaru, Mulshdi attar par. मुर्शिद हो तो ऐसा हो जैसे है मेरे अत्तार रहबर हो तो ऐसा हो जैसे है मेरे अत्तार मुर्शिद हो तो ऐसा हो जैसे है मेरे अत्तार रहबर हो तो ऐसा हो जैसे है मेरे अत्तार मुर्शिद अत्तार पर नूर की बरसात हो आश के सरकार पर नूर की बरसात हो हमने इनकी हस्ती को जानो दिल से माना है क्योंकि आला हजरत को इनसे ही पहचाना है हमने इनकी हस्ती को जानो दिल से माना है क्योंकि आला हजरत को इनसे ही पहचाना है ये है इश्क रिसालत का रोशन एक मीनार मुर्शिद हो तो ऐसा हो जैसे है मेरे अता मुर्शिद की बरसा जैसे की बरसात हो नूर की बरसात हो जैसे की बरसात हो मुर्शिदी अतार पर नूर की बरसात हो आश के सरकार पर नूर की बरसात हो जिसने सुन्नत का जलवा घर घर में पहुंचाया अपने जो दो तखवा से सारा जहां में काया जिसने सुन्नत का जलवा घर घर में पहुंचाया अपने जो दो तखवा से सारा जहां में काया जिसको दुनिया कहती है मिलत का मेहमान मुर्शिद हो तो ऐसा हो जैसे है मेरे अता मुर्शिद जाओ सैसे जाओ जैसे दे دعوت اسلامی یوں ہی رفعت پر ہر ران رہے سارے عالم پر جاری اتاری فیضان رہے دعوت اسلامی یوں ہی رفعت پر ہلان رہے سارے عالم پر جاری اتاری فیضان رہے یا رب دائم رہے سلامت یا رب دائم رہے سلامت یا رب دائم رہے سلامت ان کے ہستی کا گلزار مرشد ہو تو ایسا ہو جیسے ہے میرے اتا مرشد ہو تو ایسا ہو جیسے کی برسات ہو نور کی برسات ہو جیسے کی برسات ہو مرشد اتار پر نور کی برسات ہو عاشق سرکار پر نور کی برسات ہو
برسات ہو ان کی روشن سیرت سے ہم کو بھی سوغات ملے ان کی نیچی نظروں کی ہم کو بھی خیرات ملے ان کی روشن سیرت سے ہم کو بھی سوغات ملے ان کی نیچی نظروں کی ہم کو بھی خیرات ملے رب نے ان کو بخشا ہے اعلی سیرت اور کردار مرشد ہو تو ایسا ہو جیسے ہے میرے عطا مرشد ہو تو ایسا ہو جیسے ہے میرے عطا رہبر ہو تو ایسا ہو جیسے ہے میرے عطا مرشد عطا پر نور کی برسات ہو آش کے سرکار پر نور کی برسات ہو دل بھی سب کے جامی واروں دل بھی سب کے جامی واروں مرشد عطار پر صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلا علیہ وسلم نا ما شاء اللہ عز و جل we don't have much time we are going to our hadith segment and subsequent to that we will turn back and then inshallah عز و جل speak about our last and final segment today one of the departments of that Islami the Darul Iftah let's move to our daily hadith صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عن أن رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم قال ليس الشديد بالسرعة إنما الشديد الذي يملك نفسه إن ذا الغدب سيدنا أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه has narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم said the strong man is not the one who can wrestle rather the strong man is the one who can control himself when he is angry dear viewers of rise and shine no doubt this is a very testing moment when one becomes angry especially for those who become easily provoked and tend to get angry over small things. But through practice and patience, one is eventually able to control his anger. We will have heard many ways and techniques and strategies how to dispel anger. But today I bring you another beautiful way, uh, another beautiful tactic to keep ourselves controlled and composed in the state of anger. And that is by remembering the instruction remembering the advice given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam what a beautiful and simple advice it is narrated on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala and that a man asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to be advised he asked Ya Rasulullah advise me so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said La taqdab do not become angry so the man he asked the question again and again and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam kept replying, لا تقدب, لا تقدب. Do not get angry, do not become furious. Subhanallah. If only this advice given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come to our mind when we are also angry, then surely it will aid us in putting off our anger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to always safeguard ourselves from committing sins. آمین بجاہ النبیل آمین صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلا علیہ وسلم الحمدللہ عز و جل that was our daily hadith ماشاءاللہ عز و جل now our last and final segment, and we shall be completing on this also, uh, mashallah, the Darul Iftar. We do. We also have a promo for that. Would you like to let's watch the promo first, and inshallah, Azizul, then we'll take your comments. So let's move to the um, introduction of Darul Iftar. Let's take a look at that first, inshallah, before we continue. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu taala ala Muhammad, sallallahu taala alihi wa ala alihi wasallam.
Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Talab ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every muslim. Alhamdulillah, Dawat Islami is giving us another incredible opportunity to seek knowledge in the form of Darul Ifta Ahl Sunnah. It survived to rectify the people. It's all over. Darul Ifta Ahl Sunnah, Bradford, UK is currently functioning from Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. until 4 p.m., which is the drop-in time in which anybody can come in and ask questions about salah, about zakat, about hajj, about fasting, about business matters, inheritance, nikah, talaq, and any other rulings relating to Islam. Of the love of the Prophet, it's all the phone lines are open from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m., Monday to Saturday as well. And the phone number is 01274 Now, mashallah, that beautiful building behind uh, Mabin Bay was the new Darul Ifta, the first Darul Ifta of the United Kingdom also. And I've got to say, Alhamdulillah, it, it looks beautiful, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Right, what does Darul Ifta mean? And then what is Darul Ifta? Darul Ifta literally means, the word Ifta means to issue a verdict or to give a ruling. And Dar literally means a house. So it's a place where Islamic rulings are issued. That's what Darul Ifta means. So Darul Ifta basically is if somebody has a question about Islam, somebody has a question about prayer, about fasting, about hajj, about zakat, somebody has a nikah or talaq issue, inheritance issue, somebody wants to ask about their business, their partnership, whether or not it's in accordance with the rulings of Islam, then they can come in physically, um, Islamic brothers come in, and they can speak and converse with Mufti Sab, and they can gain guidance upon their normal matters, family matters, business matters. And if somebody wants to gain a written fatwa, a written verdict, with the proofs from Quran, from Hadith, from the books of Fiqh, then this can also be provided to them from Darul Ifta if they come in physically and submit their question. Then their question will be worked on, research will be done. When the research is complete, then we'll contact them and they can come and collect their written fatwa. And this can be in English or in Urdu um, as per the preference of the questioner. So this is the kind of the physical services that we're providing. Along with that, the phone lines are open from 2 p.m. till 4 p.m., Monday to Saturday as well, where anybody can call in. Uh, the phone number is 01274 So you can call that number and ask any question. This is for Islamic brothers and Islamic sisters as well. You can call that number and they can uh, ask questions to Mufti Sab and gain their Islamic rulings. Along with that, we also have a WhatsApp service where questions, we, uh, we answer approximately 2,000 questions uh, every month on WhatsApp. So this is, it goes to a number in our head office in Babu Medina, Karachi. And then those questions are distributed to different people in different Darul Iftas who then write the answers and then they're given back to the questioner. So all of these uh, services are available, alhamdulillah, in Darul Iftar for people to gain Islamic guidance. SubhanAllah, so the purpose of this is nowadays, especially when it's very difficult to find a local scholar, not just a local scholar, but a scholar who's proper Mm. on the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, his Aqeedah is proper. And the thing is, Shabazz, but one thing I want to mention is that whenever we have any type of issue in our life, we contact a specialist. So we have a, a number of our doctor surgery in our phone saved. If anyone's ill in the family, we contact the doctor surgery, we make an appointment with the doctor. Similarly, if we have a legal issue, we know a solicitor in a particular field, we contact that person, we make an appointment, we go and see them to make sure that that problem is solved in accordance with the law, in accordance with the best manner. Similarly, we have a number of a plumber and electrician but many of us might not have a number of a scholar or a mufti in our phones, uh, which is unfortunate because it's even more important for us to make sure that our daily activities, our family issues, our business matters are all in accordance with Islamic law. Right, this is it's two to four, is it just two to four? Is any... That's for the phone line. If anybody wants phone. to come in physically and drop in and have a physical conversation, consultation with Mufti Sahib wants to get a physical written fatwa, then they can come in physically from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, Monday to Saturday. Right, and will the two to four be, you see, because I think I'm expecting, I'm assuming that the majority uh, of questions are by your phone. 
if I'm correct? That's correct. So would that be increased in that time? Uh, at the moment, the reason is because obviously if we increase the time for the phone, then there's not going to be enough time to do written work. Right. So there's certain uh, topics which are being researched um, related to new issues which arise in this country. So obviously that takes um, hours and hours of research. So if, for example, the phone lines were from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m., then you would we were busy be on the phones the all the time. time the we wouldn't be able to actually do uh, research on new issues, right. and we wouldn't be able to provide people with written fatwas. So um, really, from 10 till 2 is our time to do our written work, and then from 2 till 4 is where we answer the calls. You accept questions. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khairah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly bless you. And alhamdulillah, we also have the uh, picture, we have today's image. Let's take a look at today's image, inshallah, and let's take your views in regards to the image. So you have a, uh, a big mouth person, mm. and then you have a you know, complete opposite, it seems. Yes. Go on then. Uh, well, it seems pretty clear to me. Picture uh, speak a thousand words. Yeah, <laughs> somebody who uh, has, a, has more brain power, somebody who has, uses his mind more, is going to speak less. Why? Because he's going to be thinking about what he says and thinking about the consequences of what he says more than somebody who may not be as intelligent or may not use his brain as much. So obviously, pretty much people have the same size brains, yeah. but yeah. it's obviously a representation of a person having a small brain, meaning the person doesn't think very much. The person who doesn't think very much speaks more. And the person who speaks more ends up regretting what he says a lot more as well. Allah, because once it's out, that's it, it's out, isn't it? But what about the hand action there? The hand action? It seems like he's angry or he's screaming or... Yeah, maybe even trying to attack him. But the, the, the other is, is he's composed, isn't he? Mm, yep. He's mashallah, he's relaxed and, um, you know, he's, he's seen self-composed. And this is what generally happens, you know, a person who has more brains, as you say, the, you know, one who's intelligent, he doesn't need to use his hands or possibly physically, you know, he's able to mentally deal with things. Mm. Um, that was quite a simple picture. Jazakallah khaira. Now, on our topic... Um, you've got about six minutes. Okay. Where would you like to leave the viewers of Mother Channel? Yeah, in terms of spiritual allegiance, um, those who have already given spiritual allegiance, um, especially those who have given them spiritual allegiance to the Mirad Sunnat, uh, the advice to them would be that there's a statement of uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Dabbagh, Rahimahullah, in Al Ibriz, in which he says that the benefit that a person gains from a spiritual guide is not dependent on how much the spiritual guide loves the murid. Because the spiritual guide loves the murid unconditionally. And the spiritual guide showers love upon all the murids equally. But some murids gain a greater status than others. Or some murids progress spiritually more than others. Because the spiritual progress is actually based upon how much love the murid has in his heart for his shaykh. So to intensify our love for murid and sunnah is important for us to for example, recite the shajara, for example, to um, fulfill the Madani works which Amir al has given to us to try to propagate the teachings of Dawud Islami as much as we can, which makes Amir al happy, alhamdulillah. We see how Amir al gains uh, pleasure and he gains happiness from those people who, mashallah, um, do the works of Dawud Islami. And also through gaining knowledge, alhamdulillah, we've seen how Amir al when he asks, for example, who's read for Tawar al who's read Bahari Shariat, who's read for Zani Sunnat, and the answer comes in the positive, right. mashallah, the gifts that Amir al gives and how happy he gets, um, it's amazing. So those of us who are murid of Amir al we have to focus on how close are we to him spiritually and how can we increase that closeness. So these are different ways, increasing our love for him, um, doing the Madani work, gaining more knowledge of Islam, reading books, reading the books of Amir al and books of the scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah. Um, these are all means of gaining the happiness and the pleasure of our spiritual guide and progressing spiritually, increasing our own spirituality as well. SubhanAllah. What about to those that have not placed their hand in guidance? Yeah, those who haven't um, and who are searching for a guide, I would suggest that they reflect upon the uh, conditions that we mentioned before and also the fact that we mentioned how the success rate of Amin Sunnah, SubhanAllah, and the Fazan that is um, spreading throughout the world, Alhamdulillah. Uh, if they reflect upon that, they will truly see that Amin Sunnah really is a unique personality of our time. And oh. there's, there's, you know, we see uh, scholars from all over the world. We see scholars from the Arab world, from Syria, from Yemen, traveling 
to Karachi to meet him, so when they meet him and they see him, then the comments that they give, Allah. Subhanallah, it's incredible that, you know, if if on the Day of Judgment, one Shaykh said that, if on the Day of Judgment, I was asked about keeping the company of the pious, then I would say that I kept the company of Mawlana right. Ilyas Qadri. So this is something which, uh, you know, the scholars, the other peers, other Shaykhs are singing the praise of him. I mean, there's one uh, famous peer in Pakistan, when he came to visit Karachi a few years ago, his comments were that in this day and age, this guy is a peer himself, he's a sheikh himself, he's a spiritual guide himself. But he said that in this day and age, from all of the awliya, the one who is the closest in the court of the Prophet is Amir al Sunnah. So this is something that peers and sheikhs themselves are saying about Amir al Sunnah. Now, another question is, I follow one sheikh, you follow another. Is this an excuse to despise you for mutual no, 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 animosity? Of, co- of course not. I mean, uh, different awliya, different turuk, different tariqahs, uh, these are all, you can say, different flowers from the same garden. So a garden only looks beautiful when it has various different colors, different sizes, different fragrances of flowers. So there's the qadri tariqa, the chishti tariqa, the suhwardi tariqa, the shadili tariqa, Naqshbandi tariqa. These are all beloved to us and respectable and honorable to us. And these are all, like I mentioned, different colors of flowers, different fragrances of flowers, which are all part of one garden of the Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So we're all united in our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa love and respect for the Sahaba, the Ahlul Bayt, and our beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah, which uh, unite us all together and which bring mutual love. But this is, this is another point because uh, Amir al Sunnat and Dawud Islami is not just restricted to Attaris or Qadris. Dawud Islami and Amir al Sunnat is for every single person who ascribes to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah who has the correct beliefs in Islam. Alhamdulillah, today we spoke about giving your hand in allegiance, spirituality, and more specifically about Amir al Sunnat, Dawud Barakatam al Aliyah. Those who have not pledged their hand in allegiance, please do so. And for those that do wish to, especially to Amir al-Sunnat, Dhamad Barakatum al-Aliyah, then on Saturdays, they may repeat after them live. And this is one method. They also may search on, uh, over internet, dawatayislami.net. And alhamdulillah, on that page, there is an option to also give, place, place your name forward to give allegiance to um, Amir al Sunnah Dhamad Barakatum al Aliyah. So please do so. So Alhamdulillah, we have also spoken about Dar al Ifta. Again, if you could quickly repeat the number 01274 010126. Oh, it's not difficult then, is it? Bradford Code. 01274 010126. Yes. So please do remember this number if you have any questions. From 2 to 4 pm, lands are open and you could go inside and visit. I think from 10 a.m. Yes. Is it? yes. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So please do because it is extremely important to gain authentic answers, correct answers um, about all of your issues, whatever they may be, you may be facing. Inshallah, do share it with them and they shall um, guide you correctly. Inshallah, Sallu alal Habib. صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine By the grace of Allah